Who am I to criticize the two popes? Which is a great film on Netflix, uh, why you can still catch it. Um, and it's a film about Pope Benedictus XVI meeting with who was to become Pope Francis um, and the meetings they had, supposedly. And I'm no Catholic historian, so this, this video is not about the veracity of those meetings and what they said and all that. It's just, it's, it's a review that basically is saying, good film, still watch it, even if you're an atheist like I am. But if you're a former Catholic like I happen to be as well, you'll appreciate it. You'll, you'll appreciate it. And, um, and especially as I'm trying to just understand how life works and how people in such levels of power, they, they, still, they still believe this. this it's, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. You know, sorry. Uh, by the way, for anybody who's expecting this to be like a positive feel-good message, it is. It's a positive feel-good message. Uh, it might not be the, the Christmassy one you were hoping for, so whatever. And um, But I feel like this needs to be said. More people need to say this and call this out. What, what I liked about the film was it beautifully directed, beautifully acted. Pope Benedictus, who is also known as, if I'm not mistaken, i got to look it up on Wikipedia, Joseph Balosius, whatever his name is, Ratzinger. I know it's Ratzinger. That's played by Anthony Hopkins. And the other one, Pope Francis, who's got another name. It's, it's not Francis. It's, it's uh, Mario Jose Antonio Mario whatever Gregolio. Bergoglio. <laughs> I'm clearly not a historian, and there's only so many takes I'm going to do on this. I'm like already by the fifth take. This is it. That's This is the final one. So anyway... The point that I want, the reason why I want to make this video is not about the details of that. Obviously, I can't even get these men's names right. <laughs> what I want to talk about is how difficult is it for people to realize the way life actually works and how to deal with something like this? Why weren't these priests just arrested, arrested, not shuffled around from one parish to another? Now, I look, I am, I, you never know these things. I don't want to watch these movies and think that I just, I'm an expert on this. For all I know, both of them are atheists themselves. <laughs> For all we know, when they were getting together, like, hey, look, man, this is a billion dollar pirate ship. Dude, where do we take this? <laughs> that's, for all we know, that's what these two men were discussing. And, you know, they were just trying to see how to steer the ship. Uh, but probably not. Suppose it was all about that. I was like, oh, my God, you know, I used to think that I talked to God. And yeah, there's a reason why God does not seem to be clar uh, communicating with you because he doesn't exist. That's why you don't hear the voice anymore. OK, when you were younger and delusional and you probably were hoping to become a pope or something like that, because it's clear that these the way that this is written, it goes to show these two men are pretty much evil maniacs. There's no doubt about it. You don't get to that level. You don't get... Um, Selected by the other cardinals who are probably also egomaniacs uh, to get to that level. Anyway, the point is, what I found kind of frustrating is these conversations that they have. And like, and that they're supposed to be like seen as profound, you know. Like with Pope Francis, there's a scene where he's talking to his parish and he's like, you know, God is sometimes like, you know, he's like an antenna, you know. And sometimes you, you don't know why the antenna is not working. Actually, if you're an expert in antennas, you'll know why it's not working. You'll fix it. And that's that's the fundamental flaw with religious thinking that they don't they don't even bother getting into. Okay, it's if you're going to make that analogy, like oh I don't know why the antenna doesn't work, but you know uh, it, it, you can find out, you can actually find out. It's not that's that we have science, we have uh, instruction manuals on that one. Okay, that's not a mystery like supposedly God is. Okay, and even though life itself is a mystery, there's a lot of there's a lot of falsehoods we could just we could rule them out. Already, we could just crumple them up like pieces of paper and throw them in. like little post-it notes, which is what I'm reducing all this. This incredible movie with all the millions of dollars that was spent on that movie, I'm gonna crit critique it and I'm gonna boil it down to just these two post-it notes, okay? And just like you could take two post-it notes and just fucking crumble them up, I wish we would do that with these bad, false, demonstrably fictitious personifications. Of forces that we just don't understand, but we call them God and we call them Satan and we have exorcism and all, uh, all these other ridiculous things. It's amazing to me. Anyway, look, I want to wrap this up because I don't want to make this too long. Uh, great film on Netflix, uh, but damn shame, real damn shame that well, aside from all the people who were affected by this, anyone and everyone who's ever been molested by a priest or whose lives have been destroyed by just religious people in general. Okay, not just Catholics, uh, Catholic priests and bishops, all religions. Uh, th these, this could end. These problems could end. And that's, I guess, that's the hopeful message that I want to, to, to convey with this video. We can end 
these things if we based our decisions on accurate information and if we did away with these ridiculous notions of supreme beings, which you can't prove a negative, but you can disprove a falsehood and especially a fairy tale like, like this. Anyway, for anybody who's watching this before Christmas on Christmas Eve, uh, Merry Christmas. I still say that as an atheist. I, this is one that's still one of my favorite times of the year. Otherwise, happy holidays, happy new year. And if not, thank you for watching.